Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. All right. First order of business is the reorganization of the select. Congratulations on the re-election. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I missed you at my party last week. You had a party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we need a new chair and a new clerk. For I'll make a motion week. to nominate Amy as the next chair of the select board. Okay. So I have a second. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Well, wait, should we ask Amy if she wants to accept? Oh, all right. <laughs> Too bad now. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passage unanimously. I need a motion for clerk. Who wants, wants to be clerk? I'll speak. Okay. You want to speak? My last chair. My last chair. Uh, All right. Motion to nominate Joyce as clerk. It's second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Congratulations. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> 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 ready to pass that over? Uh, I know. She's like, see ya. You know, when I looked at um, board docs today, I had no consent agenda. It's been on here. Did anybody have a problem? No. I had a consent agenda. I saw it. No, I didn't have one okay. when I looked it up at work today. When I went to board docs. Oh, thanks. Welcome. Here's a little different here. It's okay. It's nothing unusual, <laughs> so it's okay. So the only thing you have to watch is when that screen is on, that you're not, you know, your um, thing isn't showing. But Alex has it pretty much set up so they won't when they're shooting whoever's at the table. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so we can go to public comments. Take over, Amy, it's yours. <laughs> uh, public comments. Public comments. All right, let's move into 3.1 public comments. Um, please limit comments to three minutes, three minutes. two, three minutes so that other members of the public may have an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone here for public comments? Um, yes, upper Tony Fiden. Hi. My turn? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, my comments have to do with uh, the fact that we had a town election and there's not a lot of new faces, but still it's a new beginning. But there's something that I think needs to be discussed or needs to be talked about is that I was at the town meeting and I heard the town moderator report that the Mother's Club had to cancel its candidates night forum due to lack of interest and lack of response from the candidates. This was shocking to me as I'm sure it was shocking to a lot of people. It's the first time in 35 years that that's happened. I feel it's really an embarrassment to the town and uh, it's definitely an embarrassment to the candidates. So um, anyway, I checked with the Mother's Club and it, it was true. As they, as they always do, the club had reached out to all of the candidates, but only three candidates, as I understand it, even bothered to respond and they declined to participate or said they couldn't make it. The rest of the candidates did not even answer. So um, I'll repeat that. The majority of our candidates for office did not even respond. It was crickets. Now, this forum is typically the only opportunity to have Hadley voters have to directly question candidates. I remember the last election cycle, the select board and school committee candidates participated and they went on the record with some, um, you know, very consequential issues that did come up during the term. It's important. Uh, but this time around, for whatever reason, the candidates failed us. I want to point out that it doesn't matter if there's a contested election or not, or if someone's an incumbent or not, every candidate should participate. It helps voters make decisions, and it also helps the candidates become better elected officials. You know, when, when I was a reporter in the Berkshires, we had TV debates, and if a candidate didn't participate, we would still hold the debate. We would set up an empty chair, and we would allow the other candidate to have the entire time to themselves. We didn't have very many empty chairs because that was something that nobody wanted to experience. It was, it's really an insult to voters and it makes people wonder what the candidate is afraid of. So I do think this term begins under a cloud because of this. And 
and I think that my point in speaking out is to make sure that this doesn't happen again next time. And so uh, just so we're clear on who we're talking about, we have Jane Nevin Smith, who is the former chairperson of the select board. She did not participate. She has in the past. We have two members of the school committee who did not participate, Ethan Percy and Tara Brueger, both incumbent members. I'm a parent of kids in the schools, and I, I'm just not impressed by that. There's a lot going on in the schools that deserves being talked about outside of these type of public uh, speaking thing. We had two of the three current Board of Health members, Emma Dragon and Susan Molster, who did not participate. I'm not surprised by that one, to be honest with you. That's just part for the course for the uh, Board of Health. Also, the uh, candidate, John Roskevitz, who was running for that board, interestingly, did not participate. In the planning board, we have Jim Maxinowski, did not participate. And it doesn't matter how long you've been on a board, if you've been on for a year or 40 years, That's you time. take the time to explain to people why you deserve another, another term. I think, I don't think it's, it's that. I think that's three minutes. minutes. Thank that's you. Not three minutes, I timed this. I timed this, so I'm, uh, I'm still on. I have one, one more paragraph, please. I had the. I'm sorry. I had the timer on. I timed it before I before I wrote it. So, no, that's what was that's your call? And I have a paragraph. My last paragraph. Your choice, Amy. Sure. Yeah. So again, I hope this is never repeated, and I hope we remember that these candidates. We remember these candidates the next election election cycle when maybe there is a contested race and they're come asking for votes. If that happens, I think we should give them the same response that they gave us. Thank you. Okay. So anyone else for public comments? No one else has their hand raised. Okay. Right. Thank you. To? Now we're gonna to go to um, back to 2.1 with our Senator. friend and Senator, Joe Comerford. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you so Thank you. much. Oh, my goodness. Did you get in that graphic accident? I didn't know. We, I was coming back from Boston, though. So you'll forget. I'm sorry. I'm a few, I was a few minutes late initially. Okay. Hello, Elena. Hi. Hi. I was going to say, this is Elena. I don't think she's a stranger um, to the no, town. No, she's not. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity, giving Elena and I the opportunity to come before the select board, um, I want to start by saying thank you uh, for your work. There is really nothing harder, I'm convinced, um, after my first two terms and now my third term in office uh, than municipal service. It is hard work that you do. And I'm really glad to partner with Elena on behalf of Hadley and really glad to do this work with Dan Carey, who is a tremendous partner. Um, he and I, thanks to Jane, uh, show up here on a pretty regular basis to the beautiful senior center for office hours. And Dan is a great friend and a, a you know, just a great, great legislator. Um, so it, it runs in his family. I know. <laughs> I know. He's, um, he's, uh, he comes from good stock. He does. He, does. Uh, he, he really does. He's and we appreciate friend. you too. Well, Absolutely. You. It's nice of you to say. Um, I, I I do have your questions. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, and we so much appreciate your work and partnership. Um, and um, I can give you a little bit of an update and go through your questions if you like or comments. Mm -hmm. sure. um, okay, I'll be quick about it too, because um, I know you have a big agenda. So um, Elena and I have been together since I was uh, sworn in in 2019. I've known Elena for a lot longer than that, though, happily. Um, this is my third term in office. The Hampshire Franklin Worcester District um, is now 25 cities and towns starting in Northampton. It changed in redistricting. It changed because uh, the Senate had a job to do. Um, we had to figure out whether or not we were going to fight together to keep a Senate seat. Uh, we lost population, especially in the Berkshires in Franklin County. And so we were handed a map initially that had me starting in Northampton, maybe keeping Hadley going up to Greenfield and then taking the Northern Berkshires. Um, and while the Northern Berkshires is beautiful, uh, that would have meant that we lost a Senate seat. And losing a Senate seat means losing a vote. Um, and that's significant. It means losing uh, a sort of a rural focused Senator. 
um, and you know focused on the on the issues that we care about. Um, and so we fought together. And uh, what it meant was I lost some of my towns on the western and southern border. And now the district goes over the Quabbin, almost circles the Quabbin now. So it's quite a large district. It's ideologically more diverse. And I think that's just going to make us smarter, um, you know, because we'll have new communities to embrace, new communities to learn from while we continue to main, you know, maintain a pretty significant foothold in Hampshire and Franklin counties. There, the Worcester in the Hampshire Franklin Worcester district was just one community for a long time, Royalston um, and Ro Royalston beautiful, but was lonely. And now there are five Worcester communities. And so I think that's good mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. um, this year I am uh, serving as Senate chair of the Joint Committee on Higher Education. I loved public health, I did. Um, but I did want another opportunity. The Senate president was good to give it to me. Uh, and we are going big on public health in the Senate. Um, we really do see this as a transformational opportunity. Of course, that works for us here in Western Massachusetts with UMass and, and Greenfield Community College being so important to the lifeblood of the region. And of course, Holyoke Community College, and, you know, all the other state colleges and universities. I'm also um, assistant vice chair of a new, a new committee, uh, agriculture. Um, and that's wonderful. I, uh, Natalie Blay, Rep Blay is assistant vice chair on the House side. Um, she and I have a number of farm bills and we learned about these farm bills from Hadley farmers who told us again and again what needed to change in order to make their jobs workable and their family's you know, generational commitment to the land workable. So Rep Blay and I have these proposals bundled up. And so it's really lovely that we get to be in the committee where these, these proposals will be decided. They got very close last year um, at the end of last session, uh, but we ran aground as a legislature and they didn't get across. And that's a shame and shame on us, actually. Um, but we're going for it this year. And, I, you know, and I've had the farmers in mind. Um, and boy, they're on my phones, too, <laughs> and in my email. And that's good because I should be held accountable um, because we 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 have a crisis in farming, as you know better than I. Um, and it's too hot. You know, farmers make. 94 cents for every dollar they spend. I'm sure they talk about it, you know, with you all, they certainly talk about it with us as they should, and we can do better and we, we will do better. Um, I'm also assistant vice chair of ways and means. That puts me into leadership. So it's my first session in leadership. That's good. You should expect me to try to go up in the ranks in the Senate. And that just gives me a little bit of an opportunity to help make some decisions, help make sure that our priorities are you know, embodied and embedded in um, the Senate budget. And I'll say um, we haven't done so badly. Uh, rural school funding is at a record $15 million in the Senate budget that will help Hadley. Um, you know, and it's been climbing from very small numbers. This is the largest it's been in the Senate budget. Uh, it's, and of course, you know, between the House, Senate and uh, the governor, it's, you know, um, doubles the governors. Um, the our chapter 90 formula, um, as I did in the the transportation bond, a big chunk of the chapter 90 formula will be decided by road miles, not the algorithm of people and road miles and jobs, because we have the miles out here, but we don't have the people. And that's just not fair. And so the Senate's really starting to lean in to these kind of rural, in, you know, not they're not innovations. You've been talking about them way before I got here, but they're really the kind of rural justice that we need. Um, pilot funding is also at a record high in the Senate. Now that's fine, but it's not finished. And I have a bill with Natalie Blay to change the formula because while pilot's good, Hadley should get more of the more, um, but you're not, you're going to get less of the more. It's still more, um, but we can do that, right? Under Governor Baker, um, the pilot formula changed in shameful ways that where our land value is not as high as say Wellesley or Nantucket. Um, Wellesley and Nantucket get rewarded for those land values where we don't. Um, so it's an added insult, I think, to the already too low pilot. So the pilot's getting up to actually where the auditor, the state auditor says it should be. Um, the former auditor, Auditor Bump, who did the rural report. Um, so these are some indications of, of the kind of work we've been doing in the Senate to make sure that the budget reflects both Hadley's values, but also what Hadley really needs and deserves. Um, and we're not there yet. But uh, I did feel, I, I do feel a shift. I also feel a shift in the Healy Driscoll administration. Um, 
Replay and I put to, put together and put forward a rural agenda. And we said, okay, you say you you say you want 351 cities and towns to be in your administration. Well, here's what it looks like for our communities. Um, and one of the first things they did within their first hundred days was they um, established an office of rural policy. It's been something we've wanted for a long time before I was in office, but I I picked up that gauntlet. Um, and that person is in the pipeline to be hired. And the goal of that person is not only to be a voice as we are voices with you um, on behalf of rural communities, but also to examine state grant programs and say, hey, I don't know about that housing program. You know, you're valuing numbers of units. We may not need 100 senior units, but we may need 10 or 20. Um, but we get disadvantaged in the grant process because the grants are sized for Eastern Massachusetts, some of them, not all of them. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Again, these are steps forward. Is it everything that I should be delivering? No, it isn't. Um, but I, I do feel like there's some traction and I do feel like the delegation's working super hard together um, to get this done. Um, I wanted to shout out to Elena's grant program. Uh, one of the things that we did with the planning agencies last session, and we're doing it again this session, uh, and you've you've gotten some notices about it, is a grant series. Um, FERCOG is uh, has helping to lead the way with Elena wrangling, you know, the lots of the moving pieces. Last session, we found this to be wildly successful. Um, you know, our for for example, the one stop grants uh, under Secretary Ashley Stolba said, oh my God, you guys, um, you had so many applications from Western Massachusetts. And that was just one of many grant programs where the program officers said, hey, this is good. You know, it's not only our people going and hearing from these folks in Eastern Mass who sometimes are just emails and far away, but it's them talking to us and hearing, you know, this doesn't work or this is too hard or this took me five hours and I don't have a grant writer. Like they need to hear from us the reality of what it is to get money. Um, and we need to also, again, with this Office of Rural Policy um, person, we need to right-size these grants. Um, one of the things in addition to, and I forgot to mention this, we need to do better with the aid that's coming without you writing grants. So the UGA grant, the unrestricted, it's a terrible acronym, right? Um, unrestricted government aid in the Senate is quite high um, this year. And I, again, that's money that Hadley won't have to apply for, nor should you have to apply for. Um, and that's the kind of work I think we can do better and better at, um, in addition to things like within the Chapter 70 formula around circuit breaker and special education and ELL, English language learners and uh, low-income students, we can and should deliver that money in, in better um, amounts to Hadley, where you don't have to write for a grant for it. You can just, and you should receive it for your excellent school. Um, so, you know, so that's the kind of work that I've been doing, the public health work that I did largely last um, session continues to be with me. One of the issues I'm working on, which I know is important to Hadley, is mosquitoes. Um, and, you know, the mosquito law that we um, we rewrote a temporary law, which expired, and now we have a bill in, um, uh, which is before the Joint Committee on Public health. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. The Environmental and Natural Resources Community uh, Committee that had a hearing, um, and there are numbers of other bills that you know we have nicknames for them. You know, we might call them the you know the Hadley Mosquito Bill or the you know because we we've heard from Hadley, we've heard from constituents, um, and I just want to thank uh, you know those of you on the select board and in the town you know for bringing us in on projects that have been meaningful to Hadley. Um, the Hawk Signal, um, the, the uh, Housing Authority, Best of Homes. Um, we've been grateful to be able to be a partner with the town on some of this work. And certainly we can do more. And I think the more should be in my answering what your uh, what your good questions were and comments. Um, so if it's okay, I'll turn there. My password doesn't work when I need it to work. <laughs> I don't know why. Does anybody have a question or comment? Oh, that's oh, yeah, up now. What's oh. your password? Oh, wow. <laughs> Very good question. I have to type it to know it. Um, so um, it, the increase in local option meals tax. So thank you, Carolyn, for calling these. And I know Jane and Molly sent some in. Um, but the increase in local option meal tax sooner than later, was that a an interest in a bill 
um, you know, authorizing it or was it was it your interest in a local? That you know, was part of the in-house finance team. I, and, and Dan, I know you're on the call. Dan, you that was one of your issues, correct? This is our um, assessor. Yeah, oh, great. I, I believe there's a bill. There is. Right now yeah. to go up by three quarters of a percent with the local option. Yes, thank you, Dan. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the Zoom screen. Yes, and uh, because you raised it, our chief of staff is looking into that now. Um, and I wasn't sure whether or not you were going to want to file a, a home rule on this. But there is a bill. Um, our chief of staff, Jared, uh, looked into it today because you gave it to Elena. Um, we reached out to the committee staff. We reached out to the folks who filed it. So we're happy you know, to take your comments, to understand what's important to Hadley here. Um, and to get involved. Um, and money is important. Money is always important, Jane. <laughs> that is, this seems to be yeah. a relatively painless way for our taxpayers. Yep. Because our restaurants are not necessarily residents. Yep. Um, to help the town. No, I think this is very good. And I was glad you raised it. Um, I didn't know it was, a, you know, I didn't know it was a conversation. And that's why this meeting is, is good, right? You tell us what's important. Um, so we certainly will be responsive to that. I also wanted to say that I have a statewide bill um, for a local option luxury real estate transfer fee. Um, it's a local option bill. Uh, I think it's a smart bill. It's gaining uh, statewide support. It would give, if passed, Hadley a bucket of tools, which you could take and use. You can decide, um, do you want to, you know, and it's, it's so it's, um, you either can choose from homes that are above the statewide median, um, but probably for Hadley and communities in Western Mass, we'd choose the county median, um, which is going to be lower than the statewide. And you can do a percentage above the median. You can do a transfer fee between 0.5 and 2%. Um, you can choose who pays, um, uh, half the seller, half the buyer. We don't, you know, where the bill is agnostic, that's a tool. Um, the only thing the community couldn't choose is the fact that it would have to go for affordable housing, um, which I know Hadley values very, very much. Um, and it's gaining speed and gaining traction. There's a statewide coalition. It made your your um, local option meals tax made me want to tell you about this. Uh, it's a great coalition, very diverse across the state, um, you know, large communities, small communities. And I feel like we can get this done. Um, there are people opposed to it. Is where would it go in the budget? That's affordable housing. It's affordable housing. Oh, it's affordable. It would only housing. go to affordable housing. The bill oh. that I I have now okay. um, would only go to affordable housing. That and communities would adopt it, and then uh, have a whole bunch of decisions to make based on what you think your community would endure. Um, or, you know, thrive with maybe, uh, and you can exempt certain populations, right? There are ways that you can exempt, um, say, for example, farms, right? That's a big deal, right? Farmers have, they're sitting on land, but they're not sitting on cash, mm -hmm. right? So maybe, and again, these would be had these decisions, not mine. Above as, and as they beyond should. their APR 61A? Yeah, I mean, yes, you, you'd have to, had they could sculpt it the way that had these residents needed it. So, um, but we'll look into the meals tax for sure. The cannabis host community agreements. I will say this is um, this is uh, an intense topic. Now, the bill that came out of committee, and actually, Elaine is going. Elaine is sending a letter. She's she's wrangling a letter from our office to the cannabis control commission based on this right now. Um, and you'll get a copy. The town will get a copy. Um, so, the bill that came out of committee. Um, and this is this has gotten this has been very confusing. Had in it the initial bill had in it a provision to make the host community agreements um, subject to change retroactively. Um, I opposed that. I just want you to know. I, Thank I, you. yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> but I, I agree. So I, I under well, I could understand what the committee was trying to do. Um, our issue out here is not gouging, right? Maybe that's happening mm -hmm. um, in other communities out east, but that's not what we were doing, right? We were trying to negotiate this new industry with these host community agreements. So to the pres Senate president's um, credit, she listened to folks like me and said, no, the bill that would come to the floor, which is what happened, um, did, not <clears throat> did not allow for any retroactive renegotiation of host community agreements. That is very clear in the text. The Cannabis Control Commission right now 
is um, reviewing this. And so the town can submit comments um, and say, you know, that it would be injurious to Hadley. We will say that it's injurious to our 25 cities and towns to have currently negotiated host community agreements subject to any retroactivity. It's also against the spirit of the law, right? I mean, and all you have to do is actually follow the trajectory of the bill. Um, the bill came out with it and the Senate stripped it and passed a bill, you know. So um, it is uh, something that I am tuned in on. Um, and I am concerned that the Cannabis Control Commission follow the letter of the law. Um, there is, uh, there it, it will have to do a bit of thinking about how, what happens when a cannabis, uh, cannabis um, establishment comes up for relicensing, which is different than the host community agreement. In our view, um, the agreement should stand, which it would stand as the uh, so, for example, if you have a five-year host community agreement, your establishment will need to get relicensed, but you've signed this agreement. And as long as the, in, you know, the um, business gets relicensed, the agreement should stand. Um, thank you. So we will do our best to fight this out. But, and if Hadley fights, you should let us know. Let us see it, um, CC me and Elena, so that we can amplify to the CCC. So if we want to write our own letter then we can get the information from you, Elena. Yeah, yes, we're going to send it. We're going to send it. We're going to send it tomorrow. Send tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow yeah, probably. We send it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we'll send it to you guys. And um, we're happy, to, you know, we're happy to, you know, if you want to meet with commissioners, whatever Hadley wants to do in your own advocacy um, is fine, is great and appreciated and needed. Um, but it's very much on our radar um, because we are, I think, a unique, we have a unique perspective on the cannabis industry out here. Um, the municipal building authority. Uh, so this is another issue I've heard loud and clear from Hadley, um, loud and clear. Um, so uh, Natalie Blay and I have a bill um, which um, would establish a municipal building authority. We actually got pretty far last year. Um, we didn't have a revenue stream and that was part of the issue that was blocking us. So actually Jared and Elena put their heads together with a bunch of other people. And um, we are proposing in the committee that it uh, had it last session, um, liked the idea of going into the cannabis, ironically, the cannabis revenue stream and pulling out the sales tax. So the excise tax, as you know, is spoken for in many ways, but the sales tax isn't, it hits the general fund. Um, so our idea is to pull out the sales tax, a percentage of the sales tax of uh, the cannabis industry, because many of these municipal buildings are public safety buildings. And so that's the sort of a little bit clunky, but we're trying to make an, an elegant tie. Um, so we're pushing this. And again, any advocacy that Hadley can do, um, you know, you can do it through the MMA, uh, which is backing this bill strongly. Um, you can do it just on your own, which is equally as powerful. And this is just a little public service announcement. Um, you know, the legislature now, every single hearing is remote option. So no longer do you have to do the, you know, five hour back and forth and just sit for how many hours to talk for three minutes, which was an insult. Um, we don't have to do that anymore. And I will say that during COVID, the, the amount of Western Mass voices that showed up we're beautiful. Um, and we tell a different story. Um, so I really urge, you know, I know, I know you all are working so hard for the community, but in bills like you're talking about here, the municipal building authority, if you know, and, and we'll certainly tell you when the bill comes up, but if you could testify about your lack of capital to be able to do this, it would mean a great deal. Um, and at the same time we do this, we're working with the MBLC and we're working with MSBA to try to get them also to right size to our uh, part of the world, but I'll keep going on your good list. Um, the value of state owned land and equity. Um, so this is, we talked a little bit about this with pilot. There is a formula readjustment that we need um, to make. And um, it is embodied in the bill that Rep Lay and I have. And again, your acknowledgement of that as a town or as individuals, select board members or town administrators is very valuable. Um, anything you do is valuable um, because it's, what's true is that while I think we're trying to level the scales a bit, 
It's very loud in Boston. Um, it's very loud. Uh, so we have to make some noise here. Um, uh, Jane, you talked about um, calculating the town average income. Yes. I, when we went to that Western Mass hearing, I was fascinated to hear how the hill towns with one or two yeah. wealthy people get totally skewed upward in their income when that's not the reality of the yeah. town nor the tax base. And that somehow that formula needs to be totally looked at. That's true. Um, that is very, very true. Um, I should say that um, one of the ways that formula, in my understanding, appears is with unrestricted government aid. And the Senate is, and I'm I'm supporting this, I actually am pushing it, is re-looking at UGA uh, because the way that wealth, it's it's EQV, the way that wealth is defined um, is, you know, it's it disproportionately um, does not benefit us. Um, and um, with local aid, uh, the wealthier towns, we should actually question whether or not the wealthier towns should qualify for unrestricted government aid period. Um, but that doesn't exactly answer your question, well, Jane. We're as we lose a lot of grants because we are a wealthy town. Yeah. No, and this is something we have to work on. But we're, and, not, we're not necessarily wealthy because, uh, well, maybe because of some of the income, but we're also uh, known as a retirement community because there's a lot of people yeah. that come over here and retire because our taxes are so low that they travel across and come from Northampton or they come from Amherst and settle over here, you know, because it's a lower tax rate for them in their retirement years, which I can understand, but their their income is still higher because they are retired and from what jobs they did have. Yeah. So that's where we're caught between two things of, of being called not only a, re, a wealthy community, but a retirement community. Well, I, I appreciate this. This is on our radar with MMA. Um, so we will... Um, we will continue to dig into this and um, uh, infrastructure. Um, this is also, you know, this is massive. We did pass a big ARPA bill and that money needs to make its way um, into communities. Um, and I agree with you, do, we do need more money for roads and bridges and um, culverts. Um, and we need it more equitably done, which is what I was talking about earlier, that chapter 90 in both the transportation bond and in the Senate's version of the budget would be apportioned in large percent, um, 25 million of the chapter 90, 50 million of the Senate budget um, by miles. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important. Um, that's really, really important. Um, the 62F, uh, um, this is the tax returns. So both the House and the Senate, I think are agreed in different ways that 62F was, um, you know, it came upon the legislature you know, like a boom, you know, and it was too bad that we we didn't realize it was going to be triggered. Um, I think leadership would both acknowledge that uh, the House and the Senate are have different proposals for ways to not trigger it again and or the House has a proposal to trigger it um, more equitably. And so it is something that we have to look at um, as a legislature, but it's very much on the table. Um, uh, and the DPW facility, I think this is what we're talking about with the municipal building authorities, right? You need a DPW facility. You've built a senior center. You've built a library, you know, fire station. Like you know, Hadley's doing its work, but there's only so much you can do while you also fund your schools and keep your municipal government operating. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, paying for internships for municipal positions, Molly, uh, I think... Sean at uh, DLS was starting to do that. Mm -hmm. um, did Hadley participate in that? The Sean Cronin's? Sean Cronin's Internship. program. Oh, yeah, we were the first ones. You were, of course we you were. Got, we got a student in uh, Hadley. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, is Sean still doing that? I, I'm getting, I'm still getting uh, emails from him, so I'm assuming. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to look. At the yeah, next I'm happy to reach out to Sean and ask about budget needs for him. I think he's a gift. Um, at DLS. Um, but yes, I love that. 
-hmm. We are also, um, you may have heard that the Senate is working uh, to strengthen affordable college for uh, community colleges. And one of the areas that the Senate has identified is municipal workforce. Mm -hmm. And that's everyone from the town accountant, you know, valuable and invaluable town administrators to water operators, mm -hmm. um, which I know are in very short supply. Um, so um, the Dyke and Hadley, uh, I would love, can we set up a separate conversation? Mm -hmm. um, can that be a follow-up conversation with the town? Yeah, and I and I, I think we I probably have to do a better job uh, communicating with you all that we are doing. Yes, um, that's kind of quiet behind the scenes with with our engineers and our DPW and our maintenance. So yeah, that I think that that on my part I need to uh, get you get better communication to you as well. That's great. But, I'd like to get more involved. Are you are you work you're working collaboratively with Congressman McGovern? No. Let's get him in too, no. and Dan, um, because there is there is a little bit of state money, not what you need, but there is more federal money. Um, yeah, I have talked with Dan about it would have to, you know, down the road, it would have to be a bond for sure, because this is, but it's, it's a long-term project with getting it up to FEMA certification. So great. Yeah, let's definitely. I'd love to do that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'd love to do that. As it happens, my cousin is Josh Shanley, who has written um, a book oh, on yeah. river safety. Um, and he talks to me about Hadley all the time. So had this issue was on my list awesome. to bring to Hadley in this meeting. And then it appeared on on um, on your list, Molly. And I was like, ah. Oh. Is he federal? Um, he worked for Northampton Fire for a long time. And okay, he yes. consulted for MEMA and FEMA. And he was one of our speakers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Climate. So he's, he's like, you've got to talk to Hadley oh, yeah. about the day. Like, so. Um, so thank you. We, I would love, I would really love to be involved in that. I always thought that the uh, Corps of Engineers should be kind of responsible for, for they built the dike and then they just kind of washed their hands of it and said, nope, we just, don't own just it. Just the Hadley part. Huh? Yeah, right. like the sidewalks. On the yeah, I know. I mean, well, so, I mean, so they're on Molly's list I, I do have to say yeah. the Silver Jackets from the Army Corps, Corps is working with us now to do an ed educational aspect of um, the dike. Oh, good. Flood protection for the community, especially in the downtown area. So that will be coming up in the fall. So that will move to Great to have you guys part of That'd that. Be perfect oh, timing. So, yes. It would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And we should get, we'll get Jim in too. Excellent. I think he would love that. And um, so I know I'm over time uh, that the housing initiatives, um, you know, barriers to housing. So we have a new housing secretary. Um, the governor is thrown down. On housing, we have a you know we have this new rural affairs person, um, you know which they announced out here in Deerfield, um, you know because it was you know advocacy from our region. Uh, so we have to we have to work this out. There has to be um, a way that rural housing initiatives are honored in different in distinct ways. We're also bringing uh, Lydia Edwards out, um, who's the Senate Chair of the Joint Committee on Housing, because she's an Eastern Master and she's a wonderful woman. But she, she needs doesn't come see us. She needs to come see us and see the scale and see the opportunities. Um, and I should have also said we brought out Secretary Pat Tudweiler um, and your superintendent, um, who is so fabulous, was there. And um, so it was, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing we're doing with the administration. We're getting out all of the officials, um, uh, Commissioner Ortega, uh, the DHE, Department of Higher Ed Commissioner, is coming tomorrow. The DPH Commissioner, Department of Public Health, is coming in June, you know. So they have to come out and see us and get to know us. And that's the opportunity there. Um, I think that's great that you're getting them west of 495. Oh, they have to. Yes. And, and you know, to, to their credit, many in the other administration, not, the, not, not everybody, but many did come. Uh, and it never fails to be remarkable, right? You know, Secretary Tutwiler heard it loud and clear about rural schools and low and declining enrollment schools and how they're very different than gateway schools or, uh, you know, other schools. That's just true. Um, and we haven't cracked it yet. And we're going to. Um, so, uh, the so the convening municipal authorities and acting as a mediator for regional initiatives. I wasn't, I, I didn't know exactly I didn't know what I meant either. Okay. <laughs> no, but I think the thought is that sometimes we get caught up in our own paradigms and our own fiefdoms, right? Um, where it may make sense to 
think more regionally around certain topics. Yeah. When we're talking about transportation, when we're talking about housing, when we're talking about DPW initiatives that require coordination. Um, and I think that I love it. having somebody at your level or, you know, that's that, that seeing it all and seeing what other communities are doing elsewhere in the state would be a great voice to have at the table and might help facilitate some of those conversations if and when it makes sense for them to occur. But still keeping Hadley, I mean, yes, we want to know what's out there in the other communities, but we still want to keep Hadley, Hadley. Oh, and you know that's, I mean? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, a, you know, that's the town's heart, right? I totally get it. I, I hear what you're saying though. Um, so, I, and I think it, I promise you in hearing that I will, we'll think about that and think about ways in which we act regionally. We are doing a couple of pieces of regional work. Um, we're convening around first light, um, which is the hydropower relicensing issue up in Gilmont, uh, Northfield Gill, yep, yep. which will have a massive impact on the Connecticut if I, we don't nail it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, and of course the Connecticut's your lifeblood, you know, like it is the whole valleys. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing it with nursing, uh, nursing training programs. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right that municipally we could do that Thank as God, well. That's my area, nursing. <laughs> so we're working with UMass to convene an entire region. Um, look at how do we strengthen the pipeline mm -hmm. of training all the way from the Vogue schools to the community colleges and colleges because our nursing homes and hospitals, we just don't have them. Yeah. And, and we, we actually need. we actually need it with um, public safety. Yes. You know, we need it with EMTs and paramedics and yes, you know, with, they're in there about last night. Yeah. Right. Which, yeah. you know, just yes. are not out there. We're really going. Every community is starving yeah. for these people to, you know, to work in these areas. Yep. So that's something we need to look at also. I completely agree with you that they're in that realm. And is there some kind of a, like a state training program to support those people to learn? I know at one point, I can't remember, I think I was in the hospital in Boston for something, and they had actually gone out into some of the lower income communities and said, we will train you how to do blood draws, or we will train you how to mm -hmm. re take x-rays. We well, each of the different levels of training need to be looked at and tied together. So it gets easier and easier to move through the ladder right. from... Mm -hmm high school or VOC to perhaps community college to a four-year college and beyond. Um, the Senate budget does actually break down some of the onerous, pretty awful um, bureaucracy. Uh, so we're beginning to look at that and I'm gonna convene this pilot of a regional pilot. So um, let's let's stay tuned on this. I'm just, again, I'm mindful of your time and I'm sorry I'm over. Question on that though. It, the training is one thing. How do we get people inspired to want to be involved with the training. Absolutely. So the Senate does have um, in two past uh, health care bills and in the budget and ARPA and this budget, so past budget, this budget and ARPA, we have incentivized both human service and health care professionals, uh, including mental health, through loan forgiveness programs. That's one way. That's a carrot. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the only way. I also think we need to do more on college affordability, which we are. Um, uh, the Senate president would like free community college and other incentives by 2024. And I do think, and one of the targeted populations is healthcare. Um, and, you know, I think it, if we could make it radically affordable um, so that folks aren't coming out with crazy debt, that's, that's one carrot. Mm -hmm. It's not the only one. Um, and then the sidewalk maintenance I think we should have a conversation about this. Elena had heard from the town and way back with David Dixon in 2019. And we certainly have heard from like Pathlight and um, and Elena's done some work. Go ahead. I, I don't need to speak with you. No, well, uh, we've, it, it, I've heard, we've heard also from constituents who are concerned about safety and, um, and we just know it's a burden on the town and it's not, we've heard from other towns um, and that it's some, we've talked to DOT about it and they've basically said, this isn't something we can fund statewide, you know, to plow all the sidewalks on state roads, which then leaves municipalities um, and to pick up that slack. And that's not fair. So there, we would love to talk more, I think, about yeah what we could what we could do. I think we should bring MassDOT out for a meeting with municipalities on this. There are some target municipalities that have some significant, and we can ask Patricia Leavenworth, um, who I, I find to be a, a really pretty great partner 
And, you know, there are significant lengths of state roads with munici- with sidewalks different than. And maybe it's chapter 90.1. You know, I mean, there's some other. Yeah. We have chapter 90 money. Maybe there just needs to be. Sidewalk or MassDOT, yeah. or MassDOT's budget goes up with sidewalks in mind. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, either Hadley takes it on. There is there are grants that we've uncovered for equipment um, to clear. But that's still your personnel yeah. and still the, the material like salt or sand that you might use. Um, mm-hmm. well, so the, the mindfulness of the state plowing onto the sidewalks that we've just cleared or are going to clear because that's their job is to clear the road. Right. But they're not but, they're not coordinating with the town. And then all of a sudden that's double work for you or triple. So that's a problem unto itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd love I'd love us to get in okay. with you and and do this work. And then um, finally, I just want to say, I, you know, I've had the opportunity to have many conversations with Chief Mason um, as we talk about police reform implementation and how we can and should do uh, better as a state to provide resources. And I'm grateful for the chief's leadership um, and the Western, you know, he's leading the Western Mass Chief on top of everything else. And uh, I, we brought Secretary Reedy out um, Last week, it feels like five weeks, but last week, uh, and he secret he's the EOP secretary, the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, and um, we had the, many of the Western Mass chiefs there, including Chief Mason, and um, the secretary is listening. Um, so we have money for the bridge program, as you know, uh, but that's imperfect, right? Because you still, you know, it's um, it's it's still really hard to figure out how you're going to pay for police officers, and still part time officers were important. Um, here and the difficulty of training at a full-time level after the bridge program for a part-time officer um, and salary disparities. One thing that we're working on is, uh, which the secretary supports and is, I found out was happening in Eastern Mass, is an academy, a police academy out of, and this is not baked yet, um, but out of a community college that would graduate um, trained police officers Mm -hmm. on the state's dime so that a community like Hadley wouldn't have, and the chief, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll work certainly very closely with Chief Mason on this, but Hadley wouldn't have to hire someone and then train the person and wait while it's getting the person's getting trained and then um, have someone and it wouldn't have to bear the expense of training that person, maybe uh, only to find that perhaps it's not the best fit for Hadley. Um, so I'm hopeful that this is one way that the state can listen to a rural reality with regard to police reform. Um, And I will stay on this. I promise you this is a priority for us Um, because I think we have to, you know, um, I voted for the bill and, um, and now I want to see it through. And, uh, you know, I've made that clear to chief Mason and, um, and many other chiefs in the region who are affected by this. Mm -hmm. And I think we can and should. So. And just a plug again for, (laughs) I'm all about the police and, Chief Mason does a great job and oh, my whole department, our whole so department good. does, my whole department, our whole department does. Um, but again, on the fire side of it, you know, we've applied for that safer grant numerous years in a row. We have applied for it again. So we're kind of waiting to see if it would need, we, we really need a 24 hour fire department at this point because it's very difficult. And as a lot of communities are finding out and not just stars is that, it's hard to um, staff with on-call firefighters on the off shifts. I mean, they're just people have jobs, they, yeah, they're not available. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think in many communities, it's a detriment. So, I mean, that's really important. And I think I'd like you know us to be taken very seriously this year also. And that's the FEMA grant, right? The safer, safer grant, yeah, yes. Because that was actually part of the grants workshop that the Senator mentioned um, last, I think it was on, Monday. This time is um, there. There was a FEMA FEMA presentation specifically on that and mm-hmm. the assistance for firefighters grant through them. So we'll send out. I haven't sent it out yet, but we have the recording from that. Oh, good. Um, right, so have these planning on? We applied for it again already. We won't did, find out until I think January. January. Did Jim write? Did Congressman McGovern write you any kind of support letter? Mike Mike wrote it. So I just this is my final plug, and I'll get out of your hair. Please tell us when you apply for grants. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I mean, we are like an engine that could with Congressman McGovern and, of course, with Dan. Um, we are happy to know about it. Um, 
it is, it, you know, sometimes it looks like a, a, a gushy letter from us. Sometimes it looks like um, a call to the grant officer if we can get that close. Sometimes it looks like an invitation to bring the people out um, to see or to meet with the town. It looks different depending on the rules and regulations of the grant, but you don't have to, of course, involve us. Um, but why not? Why not? I mean, now that you're telling us, we will. Yeah. So I will say that, you know, if you look on our website, um, you, if you look on our website, um, which is right now inoperable because we're having a, our host is having a problem. But if when you do look on our Senator Joe Comerford.org website, you'll see the letters we write. That's not even all of them. It's the ones that we remember to put on the website. So we churn all the time for towns um, and we'd love to churn for Hadley. I'm not saying that we're the magic uh, I'm I'm not saying that at all, no. but it is a good thing to have your delegation yeah. say, hey, these are our people and we care about them. And this is a good grant. Mm -hmm. This is so good to know. And we will yes, do that. That's great. So it's, really supportive. it's a small, it's small, small, small for what you're doing. You're doing the heavy lifting of the grant. We can at least have your backs. Um, and we and, appreciate it because we know you have our back. Right. Yeah. Well, and now we're learning more ways that you're going to hold our back and we're going to use them. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate everything you do, yes. too. Oh, thanks for thank all you. the time. Yes. Thank you. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the great questions. Thank you for calling them. <clears throat> thank okay. you very much. Thank, thank you. All right. Friends. Thank you. At least you can get out of town without too much traffic. Safe travels back. <laughs> yeah. Right. Actually, I'm on to one more thing, but oh, there yes. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. It's good to see you. We'll follow up on the second agenda. All right. Yep, moving on to consent agenda 4.1. Warren's AP 2345S, AP 2345, AP 2344S, AP 2344B, AP 2344, minutes from December 7th. Um, Mosquito opt out committee appointment, Dave DiLorenzo. Common Viticular license, uh, TKP Hospitality Friendlies. Use of Lower Bay Road Reservoir. Um, Young Men's Club Fishing Derby, June 10th, and use of Lower Bay Road Reservoir for Young Life Egg Wars. And David Winch from uh, Young Life is on the question. Yeah, I'd like to pull that one out. I, I do have a couple of questions on that one, but I'll make a motion to approve um, the rest. Second. Okay. Motion by Molly, second by Joyce. Um, now discussion, um, actually we're striking it. So we vote on it now. Right. And then, okay. All right. Um, vote on consent agenda. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So All I right. just, uh, my only question, and I know Dave Wench is on here. Um, egg war sounds like an awful lot of fun, but it also sounds extremely messy. So I was wondering if we could talk about uh, what you guys are imagining and what the cleanup might look like on that. You on there, Dave? On mute. I can't unmute if I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah. You're on mute. All right, there you go. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I uh, some of you know me. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but uh, some of you do. And I've been working with uh, kids for a long time. And yeah, we've done this before many times. We've done it in backyards. We've done it in woods. We actually have to tell you, this is, uh, uh, you, know, you know, full disclosure. We've actually done it at Hadley Reservoir a few times. And it, it we clean up certainly all the, uh, the things that don't degrade naturally the egg cartons uh, and whatever else we might have. Uh, but in the woods, the eggs and the shells has, you know, never seemed to be a problem, whether it's in somebody's backyard or whether it's in the woods. So, uh, but it, it will, it will look clean on the, the, uh, the, the pathway. It, it always has, but in the woods, there will be, you know, eggs decaying or, or not decaying, but uh, being absorbed into the soil, I suppose. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Go figure. Kids like to throw eggs at each other. So, these, what is the age range of this? 
Well, we're this is with middle school kids right now. These are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders that we do this with. And we used to have a lot more kids come. Now it's a smaller group uh, at this point in time, anyway. So there'll be about a dozen kids, I would guess. Although it's going to rain, and you know, uh, pretty solidly. So. So what's the purpose? What's the, of, yeah, what's, yeah the what's the purpose of, purpose of, of it? Fun. <laughs> what's, the, what's the fun of this? <laughs> you know, why don't you guys come and join us? Oh Again, no! no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce, you need to go to a young uh, any a couple of young life meetings to understand that this is mild compared yes. to a lot of stuff <laughs> they do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, motion yeah, to. No, I can pretty much tell you that uh, we, uh, I don't know if you've had complaints before and I have to apologize. We've, I should have gone through this process, but what's that old saying about uh, permission versus uh, forgiveness. And uh, so I asked your forgiveness to start out, but uh, I don't, we haven't, there's nobody that's really complained. I think some uh, hikers have enjoyed watching it and uh, we do a few things with the kids on the trail, uh, you know, egg toss, egg drop. Um, uh, we, we do a couple things right there on the trail, but most of it's running through the woods and they're just chucking eggs at each other. And that's where they they pretty much uh, absorb this, into the soil. This is pretty good since eggs are expensive now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to buy, uh, when we had a larger crowd, 150 dozen eggs. But now I'm only buying 30 dozen for our smaller group. Yeah. And so do you have an issue with parking for the people who are participating? No, it's mostly moms and dads dropping our kids off. And then then we'll have a couple of vans to bring them over to my house for a little barbecue afterwards. And parents will pick them up at my house. So parking is really not an issue. It is plenty of parking there. So you don't want to have the egg wars in your backyard? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, if you say no. We'll probably have it in my backyard. Yeah, <laughs> we've had it in uh, Andy Klepacki's backyard already. No. A few times. So, <laughs> yeah. motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Same sign. Excellent. Have fun, Dave. Thank <laughs> you. Can I ask you one more quick question? Uh, would I need to come back on a year yearly basis if we do this annually to ask again? Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. No more forgiveness, Dave. Okay. <laughs> Good point well taken. Thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Bye. 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 All right. Uh, old business 5.1 flag flying policy. Looks like we have a draft, two drafts. Um, I, I did as you asked um, from the meeting on the I mean, is it mm -hmm. that meeting back in April where mm -hmm. we moved this board? Um, I did go through and I removed uh, the commemorative flag portion of it. So now it's a much simpler and more streamlined mm -hmm. um, policy that only allows uh, governmental flags and a pound flag. So, so both and, policies are shown, but the, the one that says this is draft number two. Right. Well, I mean, from the email I sent. Draft number two is the one that has only. Yeah. Draft number two. Yeah. I have a motion to accept draft number two. Do you want me to read it? No. No, you're good. This is y'all's draft. Okay. And, um, so if, if y'all would like to read it out loud, you're well, no. two. You're good. <laughs> Make a motion oh. to accept draft number two. I'll second it, taking out my name as chair. Sorry, I wrote this. It's okay. <laughs> I will adjust that. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I remember. Yeah. You got I was stuck on the other side. Motion and seconded. Just add Molly's name to that. She's on second. I bet. Yeah. I, sp I spilled over. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, make it look fancy and bring it back to be able to sign on your meeting on June 7th. Fine. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes unanimously. Excellent. I think that's the safest option. <laughs> All right. Um, 5.2 Board and Committee Volunteer Handbook. Come on over, Jen. Yeah. All right. So this is still just a draft. Uh, we do have it out to the lawyers at the moment for them to do some editing and add anything that they think is missing. But um, 
Carolyn and I have gone through it. There are some things we'd still want to change that's in here right now, but we just wanted to kind of keep it on the agenda and let you know that it is still working. And if you have any feedback or anything you think needs to be added or clarified, we'll be happy to. Do you think um, whatever changes you want to, we, you're talking about making, um, it'd be perfect timing if this is finalized for, you know, all of the committee assignments and updates that are going to be coming up. Yeah, I, I, I think we can. There's just some things, it's minor stuff. It's outdated and yeah. stuff that's actually not legal. <laughs> so we can get take care, care of that. So we can get rid of that. <laughs> not that it's not legal, but. So why is it again an executive session? That's the other handbook. That's the, yes. Yeah, the, yeah we're oh, doing volunteer the, handbook. We got lots of handbooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where where do we stand with town council on this? It's in their it's hands. in their hands, and I guess we'll have it back probably by next week. Okay, so thanks. By the next meeting, we can definitely have a lawyer approved version. Good. And you'll send it out as soon as you get it, so we can yes read that version. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. New business. Um, Six point one. North Cafe Sugar Shack. Yes. Um, so the boys are not here this evening. They are actually working uh, to reopen the restaurant. They said that they're going to start doing dinners again. Um, yeah. And so they're they are working. So they are not going to be here this evening. However, the ABCC has changed their rules for how we process changes to hours through their through their uh, organization. We used to have to have a public hearing. And we would have to notify the abutters of all of these steps. But now for change of hours, uh, they submit a letter that states very clearly they would like to change their hours. I bring it to y'all vote to approve, approve it. So when the boys were applied for their license, and I want to be very clear, this is for their package store, not their restaurant portion. I mean, they're not serving alcohol at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, they actually on Sunday. Good. Oh, plus brunch. Uh, but this is like, this is the takeaway. This is the take uh, the off premise like store. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, they, when they requested it, requested eleven thirty to eight p.m. They are now coming back and asking to be able to sell at ten a.m., which is um, sort of on par with what other liquor stores are doing within the town. Um, mm -hmm. So I would recommend, based off the fact that that is not what everyone does in town, but a large portion of our organizations uh, businesses do in town. On Sundays, they do start selling at 10. So I would recommend that y'all approve it based off of the other businesses. So 10 to 8 on Sundays? Yes. And what about the rest of the week? The rest of the week is not being altered at all. Um, how it should look their whole license, like what it says. Right. But it's, it's their standard business hours, I think, whatever it is. They're, se they're 7 to 5. But they don't, I don't think they sell alcohol at 7, but yes. Yeah. Motion to approve? Second. Second. All right, motion by Molly, second by Randy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Thank you. 6.2, board and committee appointment updates. Um, I asked for this to be put on the agenda because it is time uh, again for boards and committees beginning to uh, the June 30th, we appoint on July 1st. So the time is coming for us to uh, do your annual appointments for boards and committees. So um, I did attach a list uh, and I realized and I just cut and paste from somewhere else. I dropped a page somewhere in there. So there's another little list in there of the people I dropped out. Um, but these are the boards and committees that you have. Um, and these are the members on them. And um, I'd like y'all to, uh, I'd like to send out an appeal for people to send their uh, updated letters to us for their members for June 7th. Um, so I would like to have it at the June 17th meeting, but I would like to have them in hand by June 7th. So I'm gonna have an updated list for y'all to review. And um, also I, there are some committees on these lists that I would like y'all to review. It might be that y'all find that they've completed their terms because a lot of the committees are appointed until term or they're an annual appointment. And um, we did this, I was trying to remember earlier, I think we did this four or five years ago where we disbanded some committees that had filled their purpose. And it's just one of those things, you know, I think it was the Agricultural Incentive Committee 
had been around for years and years and years. And we just kept appointing people who were like, why am I on the committee? I don't know about it. So this is one of those things. We want to make sure that the committee is in power appointing our people who still have uh, the community still has the purpose to move forward in the town. So um, I'd like y'all to review that. And I would really love it for all of the board of committee chairs who will be getting an email from me tomorrow afternoon um, to review their appointment list and uh, make sure that everybody is correct and so resubmit it to us. And they'll get a fancy little email about that. The other thing that this list gives us for our next meeting is a way to look at who we want to be liaison to. Mm -hmm. And if you see any mistakes, just I'm not offended, just email me and I will fix anything. And, and that's what this is. This is the opportunity to fix and make sure everything's correct and up to date. It yeah. helps us educate as well as things as things are changing. I think I sent sure. you all an, an email about um, you know what people can say in public and and how to to facilitate that. You know, I sent those out to all the boards and committees. So this will help us because I got some that came back and said, I'm not a member anymore and things like that and teaching people about forums and stuff like that. And so we just need to do a better job educating all the committees. And this, certainly this committee handbook is a perfect time to have this updated, the committee handbook updated, and then some guidelines um, that I think we all need. All right, and make sure every committee has a mission. Yes, a mission. The other thing we talked about. Yep. Staying alive. <laughs> okay, great. So pretty on both some All right. Six point three pounds road paving, Route Nine paving, and related traffic concerns. Yeah. So I, um, I actually, uh, Joyce had requested that we bring this up, and I also wanted to um, uh, have. Mitch and Scott first start with how they've been dealing with all of this, why certain decisions were made, some decisions were made out of our control, um, but the ways we've been trying to mitigate the aggravation that we all know we, we have some slight control over. But um, I think it was important that you hear from them first, because I think some of your questions might be answered in how they present what they've been doing. So uh, did you guys toss a coin? Who's going first? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Looks like a last minute coin decision by the DPW <laughs> director. So I want to, I want to preface this with some of the information I'm going to suggest to you are my opinions as the police lieutenant for the town of Hadley. They are not the opinions of mass DOT, both our contractors, any of our subcontractors. So as everybody knows, we are in uh, year one of a four-year, $27 million state highway project. This involves a full depth excavation, replacement of water, drainage, gas, utility poles, expansion of several retaining walls, diversions of waterways, and re reconstruction of four major intersections along Route 9 with full traffic light system replacements. Baltazar has worked continuously since last spring and throughout this past winter, often with between three and six crews working throughout. Crews right now are mainly working on road reconstruction, drainage replacement, and retaining walls. A significant ongoing portion of the project includes uh, approximately a half mile stretch of Route 9 between Middle Street and East Street that has been excavated, milled, and is awaiting a binder layer of pavements, which will begin this coming Friday. Construction at time spans minimal to significant impacts on traffic, depending on the type of work that is ongoing for that particular day. The most significant impacts are when crews work in the roadway, causing one uh, reductions down to one lane of traffic, which forces the officers at the at the at those posts to do alternating uh, flows of traffic. If multiple crews are blocking the lane of traffic at various points within the work zone it increases the effect of, tra of traffic. So by now, a lot of folks, much to the dismay of some of the surrounding neighborhoods, such as Bay Road and Rocky Hill Road, a lot of these motorists are finding their way around Route 9 and uh, finding alternate routes to their destination. Uh, up until recently, we received a few complaints, some occasional <laughs> shaking fists at us, and the occasional obscene gesture. Since the beginning of the project, uh, I've been the point person uh, 
for the resident engineer at MassDOT, the project superintendent and foreman at Baltasar. I'm in touch with one of the three of them on almost a daily basis, often all of them several days a week and on the weekends. Another person that I'm in contact with on almost a daily basis, office, often multiple times a day is Scott McCarthy. We don't even say hello when we get on the phone, we get down to it, we state our problem, we come up with a solution. I think my wife thinks that Scott McCarthy in my phone is a pseudonym. <laughs> oh, Scott again, huh? <laughs> so when we problem solve, we don't always like the solutions we have to come up with. But our common goal is to take care of the town of Hadley, the residents, and the people who visit our community. Scott and I knew back in the fall that state work was going to conflict with town work. We started talking about it then, and we gave uh, and we talked about it throughout the spring. And it was only on May 5th that we were given a firm yes on pol uh, and police details were scheduled. Uh, we knew that milling was going to be occurring on May 11th and May 12th on Bay Road, Rocky Hill and South Maple Street. On May 9th, it only became clear what was going to happen and on which streets. We knew milling was going to happen, but we didn't know where it was going to start. We didn't know where they were going to end. We didn't know which streets they were going to be on. On 510, the impact of the milling on Route 9 was extremely significant. We received numerous complaints. Uh, I want to note that the Mass DOT work projections and impacts are posted on the Mass, DO, uh, Mass DOT website on a daily basis. And it was that evening that we initiated reverse 911 calls to our entire Nixle network, even though we were still unsure of where our town work would be commencing uh, on Bay Road. And um, because we don't know where the work may necessarily start, we don't know where the impact is going to be. We don't necessarily know where roads are going to be detoured until literally that moment when the officers arrive. On the morning of the Bay Road milling, I met with the four detail officers and we discussed the general theory of what was happening. We were still unsure of where work would commence. We were unsure of how long the stretches that they'd be milling. And with so everyone is so everyone understands the stretch of the milling that they do, the longer that they go, the more detours that we have to enact, the more traffic that we have to detour, or longer stretches we have to alternate traffic. Uh, I discussed with the detail officer several scenarios and how traffic would be addressed uh, would be addressed based on what actually played out that morning. We understand the construction impacts several thousand people on a daily basis, and I want to emphasize a few things about the roles of the police department. Number one is safety. It's our goal that all construction workers, engineers, surveyors, and officers all go home at the end of the shift, just the same that they left. Number two, keep your traffic moving. I can tell you that our officers and our TCOs take personal offense when they see traffic backed up. They want to try to do their best and they want to keep it moving. And number three on our list is easy access in and out of the work zone for construction vehicles. Officers helping making sure the load loaders get out safe, making sure that the dump trucks get out safe. All three of these we take very seriously. When traffic is not working as planned, we change it. We detour it, we put lights and flash, our officers flap their arms. We do what we need to do to keep it moving. There's not a day that goes by where one of the detail officers or TCOs are not reaching out to me and telling me that something is not working and we need to do something better. We detour a road, we put the lights in flash, we activate them manually, but what we do, we do sometimes on the fly and sometimes even to the dismay of mass DOT but we've got to keep it moving. So I did get a particular call from a very angry resident of a local community earlier this week. She was so angry that after she finally got through the construction, she stopped and made a point to yell at each one of the officers. Each one of them. Mm-hmm. And she called me, spoke with me on Monday or Tuesday morning, and she explained to me how angry she was. And when she explained to me how angry she was, she told me that she was angry because the officers were not directing traffic fairly. And that was the first time I've ever, ever heard it called that. And so I, I asked her, I said, well, what do you mean fairly? She goes, I watched that traffic 
let be let go coming from Amherst and it goes for 10 or 15 minutes. And then the traffic going towards Amherst, we'd get two minutes and we'd be stopped again. And then we'd get 10 minutes coming the other way and two minutes. And I said, okay. I said, and so, and she told me where she was. She was at the intersection of 98th Street. I said, I think this has to do a little bit with you not understanding just the scope of what the work that's going on there. And I think I can, and, and I ultimately, we got to the end of the conversation. She was happy. She thanked me. She understood. And she said, I didn't know how involved it was. She didn't realize that two other crews up ahead were down in one lane alternating and they couldn't move the traffic going towards Amherst. It wasn't that they were just like, uh, we're going to let that side just sit in traffic. They didn't have anywhere to go. So it's frustrating for everybody. It's frustrating for all of us. We're doing absolutely 100% the best that we can with what we have. And sometimes it's just in the moment. We've got to fix it right then and there. And sometimes, like I said earlier, we just don't know what's going to happen until we get there, until 7 a.m. When that, when that work starts. I just want to commend whoever was on Middle Street a week ago this morning. He did a dance that should have gotten a Grammy. <laughs> he had that traffic going. There was nothing. Nobody had any sense. Of what <laughs> and I don't think that any, I, I think that, uh, that you're likely speaking of, uh, <clears throat> I know who you're talking about, but. I don't think any anyone really shares the same level of enthusiasm that he shares. <laughs> I missed it. But we all share the same level of dedication yes, and trying right. our best to keep it moving. Right. And really, you know, I gave you three real main priorities. Mm -hmm. And what comes in like tied with number three is we don't like to be yelled at. <laughs> we don't want to be yelled at. And we want to keep the traffic moving. Yeah. So tell him I say yay. <laughs> you you guys undeservedly get yelled at. I don't think anybody here is going to have no, issue with sure. what you folks are doing. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be out there doing that. And I, like everybody else, have figured out how to get to where I need to go without going on Route 9. That's right. And that's just part of the so-called game we have to play. I hope I don't steal any of your thunder. I don't know. I almost want to like every morning when you guys are st starting, I'm driving by and I want to like chuck some coffee out my window. <laughs> but no, it, it's, I mean, I. You like I, full cups of coffee? Like, here you go. I don't know. It's like little oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you were still yeah. talking about throwing hot coffee at us. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but no, I drive that road for, you know, two to four times a day. And, you know. Well, I was out of town at quarter after six. So that <laughs> didn't, I didn't have to be to work till late. <laughs> You just plan it, you know. Yep, yeah, exactly. Well, I'll, I'll I'll say something when you're done. Uh, yeah, just to touch on what Mitch said. Uh, obviously, the the town the town's paving. Uh, I've I've been working on for months. Uh, back after the new year, I started making the calls and getting a game plan together. And you know, <clears throat> it's a it's a process to get approval, etc. Um, under a deadline on for funding from the state, et cetera. And just, I guess, timing kind of stunk, but uh, my hands are tied with it. Uh, you know, I asked to get on the list and, oh yeah, we'll be right there early in the spring. Well, you know, here they come. Uh, I get a call just short notice to uh, when they're actually coming you know we're we're penciled in but there's no guarantees because of weather related problems schedule changes etc and you know when i got the notice that they were definitely coming my first call was to mitch to uh try to get the officers lined up uh, we've been talking about this for months that shortage of traffic officers you know he's has a lot going on the route nine etc to make sure that we had you know officers for this lined up and uh, I know our guys were out there. We were setting up uh, as instructed by Mitch, where he strategically wanted road closures. You know, don't allow traffic this way, but allow it this way. Uh, working together with this the best we could. Uh, and I apologize to any residents that were hung up in traffic, but unfortunately, 
it kind of is what it is. Uh, you know, we, we have to maintain some side roads to, uh, they're getting beat up pretty bad with the people going around Rocky Hill road. Uh, Bay road was getting pretty bad. Rocky Hill roads. I did what we could with the funding we had, but it still needs, needs more. Uh, but just unfortunately, just timing was not the greatest. And like I said, that's, I don't, I can't control that. If I would have said no, we would have probably lost our funding because we would have never been able to get this done by our deadline. We would have just get, got kicked off the list. So are, how close are, are we finished with Bay Road and Rocky Hill? Our, the town's paving is complete. All right. So, you, so uh -huh. it's now everybody's back to Route 9 to complain. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the main thing is, as I said to Carolyn and, and to Mitch too, it, it wasn't no complaints about the police doing their job or the town doing their job. It was the fact that on last Thursday and Friday, you had three main arteries going in and out of town that were clogged. Mm -hmm. They had really big uh, calcium on, you know, yeah. I mean, because you, you couldn't go Bay Road, you couldn't go Route 9, you couldn't go Rocky Hill Road. So where's everybody going to go? Yeah, it was just, it's you know, just and I think, it, and we talked about next, Get out of next, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, not all, everybody does that. I mean, not everybody has an iPhone, not everybody, mm -hmm. my, right. old, my old man's got an iPhone and he don't know how to use it, but I mean, so we wouldn't give him one anyway, but so, I mean, there's our, there's other people that don't have it either. So mm -hmm. getting that information out to them to make them aware to, hey, just stay in for the day or get out early or do whatever. I think it's just communication to whatever at the point in time where you're on a time frame to get it done, Mount Warner having to do it. Mm -hmm. People asked and I asked, well, how come we couldn't do it when UMass was done with graduation and there was a time lapse there from the end of May until the end of June, the fiscal year, well, how come we couldn't do it yeah. then? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, where traffic would have been a little bit lesser. So, I mean, those were the questions. It wasn't anything to do with complaints about it happening or whatever, but they just didn't understand. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, how many, if somebody doesn't have a cell phone and hasn't signed up for the town alerts, how do you notify them? Yeah, it's it's a really difficult issue. I think you did great by putting that out right away. Mm -hmm. yep. and, one and today. you're dealing with the majority of the people you're dealing with aren't Hadley residents anyhow. So you, there's no way to contact them. And if mm -hmm. they, the people that travel this, do it on a daily basis for the most part, if they don't know what's going on by now, then there's no help for them. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I think this is why this was helpful. So now the public will this right. is, that you guys were excellent. It yes, like yeah. you, and that Joyce, it was yeah. a great idea. No, great, great presentation. So I, I appreciate it. it. And, I, I yeah. think what what they both have said though, it's going to happen again. You were right. going to have sure. something happen again, and people just have to understand that the town is doing the best they can. Yeah, and it, it, I'm really then, proud of all that they do, and I know you guys are too. And yeah. the roads, the roads needed doing because if we'd let them not be done. They would have gotten worse and worse yeah. traffic getting because everybody right. And it Absolutely. truly is Scott has no flexibility. Right. He gets a range of when you're going to see them. <clears throat> and can I bring up um, another complaint that's come up again, just if people are listening so that they get some information? Um, uh, Keishore from the Hadley Business Council sent an email out to uh, DOT because um, there were been a lot of complaints from the businesses in particular, but also residents and I can only imagine the police officers who are doing the details, uh, people not understanding why so much, um, you know, dirt is being allowed to billow through the, you know, the atmosphere. And, and um, it was interesting, uh, the response that came back from the DOT is that there's actually been a change in how they're allowed to do control of the surface um, dirt mm -hmm. and that they used to use uh a compound so, yeah, that, that they can no compound. longer use. Right. And so they're limited to strictly using water. And yes. that depending on the weather conditions and the dryness of the air, the evaporation can happen very quickly. So it's not that they're not trying to mitigate that. But again, depending on the conditions, they can only do so much. And, and the, yeah. it will continue. And the big push right now is to get 
Route 9 paved before commencement. Right. And so that way you don't have several tens of thousands of people trying to drive <laughs> at five miles an hour through this gravel section. And then the same thing for move out time. I keep so, telling people it's for the Memorial Day Parade, which is yeah, much more too. important to the town than <laughs> what's going on next door. I, I just want to add to, to uh, Thursday when we started the milling process, uh, they started off, you know, really strong on trucks. And then throughout the day, the trucking diminished tremendously. So at the end of the day, they wanted to keep going to keep on schedule, et cetera. I ended up having our trucks do it to finish out the day because we would have never finished. So we would have been even more behind schedule. So just wanted to throw you out that we did everything in our power to keep things rolling. And, and when this project started, they told us two days of paving. One day, solid day on Bay Road, and then South Maple and Rocky Hill the following day. Well, uh, uh, trucking problems, once again, you know, they couldn't do it. So we got pushed to three days. So logistically wise, there was a little bit of problems, but I, I did use our equipment and guys just to keep the operation running the best we could. So South Maple is done now, too? Yeah, they're, they're all done, yeah. Perfect. The other thing that we did too is is that there were times with the with the town paving. Obviously, we can't really tell the state what to do, but with the town paving, we had to put uh, we had to tell them no on a couple of occasions. And Scott wasn't you know wasn't too happy with me. At one point last week, I said they got to be done at six. My guys have been out there for X period of time. You've got to tell them they've got to stop. And then today they wanted to close Rocky Hill Road. The contractor said we want to close Rocky Hill Road. And I said, and I told the detail officers, I, I said, that's not, that's not with reasonable within the plan. So we're going to deal with it on a one way, on an alternating basis. So we have told the contractors the best within our ability that they've got to work within our restraints. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Good job, Jen. Thanks for staying tonight. Yeah, that. thank you. You've had a long day. <laughs> Good night. I Good should night. not have. Oh no, no, no. Tires. We one tires more. last week. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's one. There's one more thing. But it will not go wide. There's uh, six point four um, mass DOT signage for safe passage of bicyclists. Yes. So that was um, a grant that came through that MassDOT will pay for signage um, that they are um, directed to do um, under an act to reduce fatalities. And as I wrote in here, it's passing a vulnerable, it's in passing a vulnerable user, the operator of motor vehicle shall pass at a safe distance of not less than four feet and at a reasonable and proper speed. So to address this, there's um, signage materials that are available for towns paid for by MassDOT, but they need to be installed by um, the town and the location. So that's what I want so to bring to you guys. So is that on state roads only since they're paying for it, no. or are we going to put it on any road? No, because we wouldn't be installing on the state road. This is anywhere that you, that mm -hmm. I was hoping to get recommendations from both of you. Well, We're, certainly, but... Route 47 is a state road. I see that as a critical place. 47 is not a state it's a, it's a rooted. It's a rooted, it, it's road. A rooted road. Yes. Not a but, state road. Yeah. But we can put them anywhere in town. Yes. We can put them on Sunrise Drive if we thought it was yep. busy. Yep. Okay. That was my suggestion was Route 47 mm -hmm. and at each of the town lines coming into town and then at the major intersections of Bay and Lawrence Plank, mm -hmm. Bay Road, Middle Street, yep. and then, um, and then mm -hmm. River and Rocky Hill. How about Maple? North and South. So North or South Maple. Yeah. North and South Maple. I yeah. See a lot of bikes there. I see they come like right off the bike path. They're all over our road. Yeah. It's I mean mm -hmm. they're Mill Valley. No, oh. Oh. And I say that because <laughs> there are a couple of times yeah, where there, clearly there somebody wasn't adhering to the act to reduce fatalities by their own behavior. And I've seen a couple of bikes almost wind up in the ditches along. South Maple in particular. It's I've pretty seen bad. people on the stop. They don't follow the rules of the road either. So they don't stop the stop signs. They just keep going. And, and it's it's a little windy and you get a couple of dips uh, along there. And so sometimes, yeah. you know, they don't see somebody on a bike. So I would just North and South people don't even have um, shoulders on the road or anything. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think 47 sees the most just because it's yeah. a scenic byway and the bike path mm -hmm. dumps out right here on the street. So mm -hmm. that's they good. tend to get a lot of um, bike ropes. Are we they limited to what we can get for signage? So I'll find that out when I do the application. I just wanted your input. Um, certain with signage, I just like having your input on that because mm -hmm. I know signage isn't the most favorite thing to be putting up yeah. all over town, but this was important. So mm -hmm. I, w I wish I felt it would be beneficial. Right. Is, I don't more disagree with you on that. Well, I think then one thought would be everywhere the bike path crosses a street or road, we should have a sign because bikes may be coming off the bike path onto the road in one direction yes. or another. Especially the ones that don't stop at the stop sign. Right. Like mm -hmm. Cemetery Road, the East Street, West right. Street, and Middle Street. No, I yeah. see they're putting up a hawking. Uh, South Maple Street. South Maple. Mm -hmm. Not that that would yeah. probably do much because people don't even bother pushing yeah. a button that's already there to cross. They just, I almost hit somebody. Yeah, they don't. The bicycles need to somehow uh -huh. be constrained too because they do not follow the rules of the road. The difficult part about, uh, about the bicycle laws is that bicycles are required to follow the rules of the road and they're required to stop at stop signs and they're required to, to stop at stop signals. The biggest motivation for everybody to drive within the rules of the road is not the ticket itself. It's the impact that it has on your auto insurance. And so all of us, you know, if you get a, if you get a hundred dollar fine, a hundred five dollar fine for blowing through a stop sign, most people look at the $105 fine saying, okay, that's not awful, but I know what it's going to do to my insurance. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is with bicyclists, if I stop a bicyclist here on the, at the intersection of Middle Street and the bike path for blowing to the stop sign, I can issue them a $105 fine. That's fine. It's, it's well within our rights to do. But within the bicycle laws, it's specific that bicycle offenses cannot impact a bicyclist's auto insurance. So there is no motivation whatsoever for them to pay or appeal and it cannot suspend their driver's license for failure to pay. So that sounds like a question to send right to Joe Comerford mm -hmm. and say, this has gotten to be an issue. We need the bicycle laws to permit. Uh, There's got to be some kind of bite to it. Right. 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 right exactly. I mean, besides the fact that, you know, if, if it's between a car and a bicyclist, they're going to lose. But I guess that's not Isn't enough. there one between uh, like a snowmobile or uh, a, a dirt bike or anything like that? Aren't they are they aren't they subject to motorized bikes? Motor so if you were to drive your ATV or any of your off-road vehicles on a public way, ultimately it would impact your driver's license. Because you have now taken that off-road vehicle, and by driving it on the roadway, you have essentially turned it into a motor vehicle. So, for you know, we, we you can't we, say that for a bike. No, you cannot say that for a bike. What, what other motorized bikes? bikes? Respect like, what what we, 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 like, assisted bike. Amy, chair, this, this wasn't on the agenda. We've got off. Okay, okay. all right. So Moving right along. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Yes. We're good. Okay. Sorry. So what, what I want to just conclude with, we've uh, you listened to what their suggestions are. We'll put a list together. I'll know more what the application is going to look like. And I can always send it to you guys. Um, I, I don't think we have to make a clear decision before the application goes out. But once we have to make that decision, I'll send you the list of streets that you guys recommend and what we've heard today. And just we'll, I'll get your feedback. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. keep in mind we've got... We don't, we don't want to pile too many signs in one spot. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Thank gentlemen. You. Thank you very Thank you. much. All right. And I think you guys are all just like free, free to go because we're going to move into executive. Well, session. we have to go through the other items here. Just oh, sorry. Any other items anticipated 24 hours in advance? You know, that's right. Oh, okay. Um, town administrator report. Yep, real quick. Just uh, as you know, I got back from vacation. Thank you. It was wonderful. Um, I, I just want to let, if you haven't seen it, um, Zaturka Park has all of the new playground equipment. I it's great. It. Great pictures. Great. Um, the recreation, the, the commission will be planning a, uh, like a ribbon cutting ceremony 
and you guys will get invitations to that. And I'm giving Amy some guidance on that. There was at least 15 people using it last night when I went home at oh, that's awesome. five o'clock. That's great. So, that's great. Uh, just let you know that I'm, if, if <laughs> anyone had talked about them seeing the brush cutting being done on a dike, that was, that was done, got as far as we could. There's still some areas we can't reach, but I'm working with the engineer on that. Um, you'd have to bring in a barge to get some of those areas close to the water, which we, we can't do at this time, but these are our baby steps. That, that was a very costly project, um, but we did have money set aside for that. So, Do you know why they don't allow the trees to grow? Yes, uh, I heard that. Because when a tree dies, it roots, it roots, its roots leave a hole that the water can penetrate okay. and cause damage. Mm -hmm. the, and, and they would rather the have other natural vegetation, right. which is another approach that we'll hear more about in the next few years on how to address the erosion and things like and that. Carolyn, can I just ask a question? Are, are we okay with you giving this report? There's nothing... Um, Perhaps if we only listen. Under town administrator's report? Right. I think that's that was a point of question that we had for clarification about whether or not. Mm -hmm. What, the dike? No, the town administrator report doesn't have to have the details. I, I was just sharing the details. So I can list the projects. That's what the town administrator's report is. I don't have to list the projects on the agenda. Okay. I'm, I just want to make sure that we're we're good on that, that that's allowed. Okay. I mean, it, it, it should be fine. Yeah. That's the town. Yeah. That's what the agenda item is, the administrator's report. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm just throwing out that date for a special town meeting, um, tentatively, if you guys are all set, all okay with this, if you can check your calendars for October 26th, believe it or not, it's time for me to start that warrant. And then, um, our, the email.gov, we should be finishing that up in the next four weeks. And I know that Jane and um, Molly were able to attend the sprinkler demonstration um, with the state fire marshal over at the Legion. It was pretty remarkable. It's on Hadley Media and it is worth watching. It was excellent. So that's not if I you want to sleep. No, it <laughs> says if your house is on fire, just get up, forget your stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Select board uh, items for future discussion. Yeah, I, um, one of the things we we had talked about having um, the town administrator goals come back for. I can put them. You want to put them on the 17th, uh, 21st? Is it 21st? What's the. June 7th and June 21st. 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 Skipping the. Oh, yeah, every other. Oh, do you want to meet it next week? No. <laughs> We're talking about June now. We're not in May. We're out of May now, after tonight. For me, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just. Yeah, well. yeah, thank you. No, yeah. it's sitting like right there on my desk. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> Announcements? Anything else? Um, okay. Oh, school um, members liaison. Yeah, the annual liaison reports. No, it's school committee meeting on Monday. <clears throat> Senior um, center had a hundred, an average of a hundred and three people a day last month. Wow. Great. That's good. Announcements? Yeah, um, Memorial Day Parade, Sunday at 2 from the Legion. Are we invited to that? Sunday the 28th. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, not this week. Not this week. Someone yeah. said something about like mailings, like actual mailings. Is there like a mailing? What did you say? Oh, Denise Sparsto sent an email. Yeah. yeah. And I forwarded the email yeah. to y'all. She also mailed a packet to us, but I had already forwarded the information to you and the information is loaded on the website. Okay, sorry. I was looking to see my, if we're doing the cemeteries. It's on there. It's yeah. on there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, my true. parents said something. They got something in the mail for me. And so I wasn't sure if the town has my address wrong, but they shouldn't because I vote. So I don't know. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> that would have come from someone else. Committee that was okay. Organized. 
Okay, sorry. Really, I didn't get anything. I don't know. It was weird. Get in your email. (laughs) Okay, sorry about that. Are we done? Uh, no, I do. I have Mr. Edward uh, Feidenkevich, who um, graduated from Hopkins and was a Navy veteran. He married a local, Barbara Bukowski, and they have lived in Agawam most of their life, but they also have many other relatives here in town. Uh, then there was uh, Richie Chamura, um, lifelong resident of Hadley, married to Leona Waskevich Chamura. Uh, Steve and his wife, Tammy, and they have a daughter um, that was their son, is their son. And then there is uh, Debbie, their daughter also, and grandchildren. So our condolences to the Chamura family and to the Biden Kempich family. Thank you. I don't have any other announcements. Okay. So we are, do you want a motion to go into executive session? Yeah, so I'll need a motion to enter into executive session for the following purposes. Um, to conduct strategy on the employee handbook, um, and to review an open meeting complaint. Yeah, you got it. Just read where it says my name. This is you. Yeah. Well, I need a, I need a motion, right? LinkedIn. Or, yeah. Pardon? Mm-hmm. You just read the motion, though, didn't you? Yeah. It's not well enough. She didn't finish it, yeah, though. Okay. So. <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we enter into executive session for the following purposes. For Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions uh, for the employee handbook, and Chapter 30A, 21A3, to review an open meeting law complaint filed by Sue Del Molino and not to reconvene an open session. So, and then you read this. The, as chair of the select board part. Okay. No, it is on the bottom. But yeah. do we need a second? Yes. Second. Okay. Uh, as chair of the select board, I hereby announce the select board will hold, hold an executive session for the following purposes. For, for MGL chapter um, 30A, 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for the employee handbook and then go up um, and to review an open meeting law complaint filed by Susan Del Molino and not to reconvene an open session. We'll call motion we'll call, the, we'll call the we'll call the Keegan. Oh, yes. Chungalu? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevinson? Yes. And Iser. Yes. 